Hello and welcome to module eight, lesson three, which is clouds and precipitation. All right, so today um, I want you to think about what is needed to form clouds. So how do clouds form? Um, we'll also talk about different types of clouds. So condensation, as a review, uh, is how water vapor changes to liquid. So condensation would just be uh, the water vapor in the sky and that's condensing into an actual droplet. Um, so that's condensation. All right, so when clouds form, um, we will bring up that adiabatic cooling again, as we talked about last time. Um, so adiabatic cooling, basically, as air rises, it um, expands. And as it expands, it doesn't hold as much heat. And so it cools. And when it cools, that forms condensation. So it can't hold as much water. The colder it gets, the less water it can hold. So as it rises in the atmosphere, uh, it gets colder and colder and it holds less, it has the same amount of water, but because it's colder, it can't hold as much. And so when it reaches that saturation point, the dew point, that's when condensation occurs and that's when clouds form. All right, so if we look at um, condensation, condensation forms on something. And so um, condensation in this case forms on what's called a condensation nuclei. And so it's just a particle in the sky. It could be dust, it could be an aerosol. An aerosol is basically just something in the air. Um, so dust, it could be another water droplet, uh, it could be smoke, um, particles of um, chemicals, um, so anything like that. So, um, so it needs something to form on. So that water vapor, um, that condensation droplet will form on something. Um, and that's just an aerosol in the sky. All right. So um we said as air rises it cools um but it can't hold as much moisture so as it cools it holds less and less and less um and so air will constantly rise and fall and so um so if air rises and then it sinks and um, becomes very stable um then that's a stable air mass if it's not um then it's an unstable air mass and i'm sure if you've ever watched the weather you've heard them talk about unstable air masses um, so that would just be a large air mass that's wanting to rise or fall because of density. Um, so as it as air moves, it wants to be stable, and that's why air moves. Um, so once it stops rising or falling, um, then it becomes stable. So that would be a stable air mass. All right. So um, the the type of air mass depends and and changes the types of clouds that are formed. So if we've got a cold air mass or we've got a warm air mass, that's gonna change the type of cloud that forms. And so when you've got an, an air mass, a warm or cold that's colliding or meeting with something else, um, that becomes unstable. And so you've got two different types of densities, um, two different types of pressure. And so that causes mixing uh, of the air. And so that's what causes wind, but that also causes the air to rise or fall or move in general, and that would be unstable air. And that's what clouds form in. All right, so if we look at this air, um, the air mass is, this is a warm air mass, so you can see by the temperature, this is a cold air mass. So warm air likes to rise, cold air likes to sink because of density. Um, so this would be our temperature inversion, where we've got warm air already on top, cold air on the bottom, it's stable, nothing's moving. Um, the bottom picture, we've got this air mass that's cold, and a warm air mass under it. And so this is generally what happens um, in real life. And so the ground heats up faster um, than the air above. So air above generally is colder because it's um, spread out more, it's less dense, um, it doesn't hold as much heat. And so it wants to sink because it's colder and more dense. And then this warm air, it wants to rise because it's uh, less dense. And so they want, so the cold air you can see wants to move down the warm air wants to move up. So that would be unstable air and that would cause this um, cloud formation. So it would cause adiabatic cooling of this air mass as it rises. All right, so we can see clouds forming here in this picture. Um, so here's kind of just the steps of clouds forming. So sunlight warms the surface. So you can see here in the picture uh, and then warm moist air builds up. Um, that's because of evaporation. And then it becomes less dense, it rises. Um, it organizes into what's called thermals. So thermals are heat that's rising. And so you'll see some birds like to ride those. 
So they'll ride, they'll get on them and they'll kind of like lift because of the air rising. Um, also some airplanes will do that, small airplanes. Um, so we're talking like um, one person in the airplane um, and they're usually um, like a glider, you know, or something like that. They'll rise and stay aloft because of um, thermals. And then um, four, it says rising air cools, condenses to form clouds. So you can see this is where it's reached the saturation point. That's the bottom, the flat part of the cloud. All right, so um, this is when air lifts, not because it's temperature difference, but because there's a mountain range or something in the way. So here you can see this is called orographic lifting. And so this happens, <coughs> excuse me, this happens along the coast um, of California, for example. So you've got um, air coming in and it's rising up over these cliffs. And when it does that, it's forced up. And when it's forced up, it cools and forms clouds. So, um, so where we have mountains or we have some type of feature that the air has to go up, it'll cause um, lifting. And that lifting creates adiabatic cooling, which creates clouds. All right, and then here's a great example. So here's Mount Shasta. And these clouds are formed because of orographic lifting. So the air comes up over uh, Mount Shasta and it's lifted. And so when it's lifted, it cools and forms clouds. So when it forms over a mountain like this, it's called a lenticular cloud. And so it's pretty cool. Um, you've see, probably seen these a lot. This is a pretty good example. But often over Mount Shasta, you'll see um, clouds and they'll form just right over kind of like a, a mushroom cap over Mount Shasta or any mountain that's very large like this. And so that's a lenticular cloud. All right, so um, the air can be lifted by convergence um, and that's basically just air being forced upwards. Um, and it's also by mixing. So if air comes together, sometimes it'll lift um, and that is um, just by convergence. So convergence is coming together and it's lifting and that's creating um, the adiabatic cooling, but those are the mixing and moving of air is because those are different temperatures. So there might be a warm air mass, a cold air mass, and they collide and converge. All right, so here's a bunch of different types of clouds. And so you can see um, they all have different shapes and they're named by their shapes. So, um, so we've got uh, nimbostratus, um, we've got stratus. So notice how these are low lying clouds. Um, the more shaded they are, um, the more moisture they're holding. That's why clouds get dark, is because they're holding more moisture. Um, so here we've got our cumulonimbus cloud. So we've got rain associated with this cumulonimbus cloud. We've got rain associated with the nimbostratus cloud. Um, notice how these clouds have the word nimbo in them, nimbus. Um, so that means rain. So anytime you see that, it means rain. Um, so nimbostratus cloud, stratus are kind of um, low-lying um, kind of stretched out clouds. And, um, and then you've got cumulus, which are our puffy little clouds, the cute little clouds in the summer that maybe you can um, see shapes and things. Um, stratocumulus, so notice how also I said nimbus means rain. But if you look at this word, uh, anytime you're seeing cumulus, 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 cumulus. So anytime you see that, the clouds tend to be puffier. So when you think of cumulus, think of like cotton balls. You can see the puffs in them. And then stratus is like stratified. So stratified means layered. So the stratus, anything with the word stratus in it tends to be stretched out. Um, so this is a stretched out cumulus cloud right here. This is just a cumulus cloud. This is a stretched out low cloud. Alto stratus, alto means mid-level. Um, so these are mid-level clouds. And so um, this is pretty much exactly what they look like in real life. Um, so on Wednesday, I'm going to have you guys go outside and, um, and we're going to look at clouds. Um, and it may be a different day, but we'll go out and we'll look at the clouds, depending on when there's clouds in the sky. And we'll try to identify as much as we can. And so this is a good time of year because there are a lot of clouds generally and they're varied. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to see some good ones. Um, so as we go up, um, notice how this says freezing level above which clouds consist of ice crystals. So anything above this, there's ice crystals. And so all these zero, anything with this cirrus name in it, um, is going to be associated with very high altitude um, ice crystals. And so zero cumulus, notice how it's really high altitude, but it's also puffy. Cirrus clouds, those are those really high wispy clouds. 
And then cirrus stratus clouds, they tend to be um, similar to the cirrus, except for they're thicker. Um, so those are our clouds. All right, so if we go through these clouds individually, um, cumulus means that they're puffy, lumpy looking. Um, they're usually below 2000 meters in um, elevation and um, altitude. And so here you can see some cumulus clouds. Those are cute. Um, and then we've got our stratus, uh, stratocumulus clouds. So notice how they're stretched out. Um, so they're a lot different than these. They're puffy, but they're just stretched out also. All right, and then our middle clouds. Um, here we've got our um, mid-level clouds. So altocumulus and altostratus. Um, these are the altocumulus. And so you can tell because they are puffier. Um, the altostratus, they are stretched out. So they look kind of like ridges. And these are um, mid-level clouds. So some of the higher, um, higher ones might have ice crystals in them. All right, and then our high clouds, these are cirrus. Um, so cirrus clouds are really high clouds. These are real wispy. Um, they're above 6,000 meters in altitude and they're made of entirely ice crystals. Um, so they are very high altitude um, way up there, clouds. All right, so clouds, sometimes we get vertical development of clouds. So that means from the ground up or not the ground, but from higher altitude up. And so this is caused by warm air rising. Um, so if warm and cold air collide, warm air is forced up and that's going to create this upward movement of this cloud. And so that's where we get our thunderhead clouds, our great, our big, you know, thunderstorm type clouds. And those are cumulonimbus clouds. So here's a cumulonimbus cloud. Um, so you can see this vertical movement of air, the air is forced upwards and that's creating this big, tall cloud. All right. Um, and so the different types of precipitation, so you should probably be familiar with these types, um, but we've got rain, which means that it is all water. Um, so here's our warm air mass, by the way. So here's a warm air mass, here's a cold air mass. Um, so here we've got warm, we've got rain. Um, here we've got freezing rain. So notice how the temperature at the surface of the earth is colder, it's below freezing. And so water droplets fall and then it hits this cold layer of air and it freezes. Um, so we had a little bit of this um, when uh, a couple of years ago when we had the big snow uh, here and then we had, it was very, very heavy. So we had some of this freezing rain and this can cause things to collapse. So we had a lot of trees collapse, a lot of things happen. And that's because this is very, very heavy. So, um, so rain, water is heavy in general. And then when it freezes on contact, it um, becomes ice and ice is very heavy as well. And so that is freezing rain. And then notice how here um, it's, there's some freezing rain here, but there's also sleet. Um, so it's called sleet. And so there's snow, it's able to melt and reform um, into snow. Some of this is snow coming down. Um, some of this melts, but then refreezes. So you've got kind of this like pelty type of rain and that's called sleet. And then if there's a cold air column all above, um, then that's just snow. Um, so if it never melts in the first place, it just comes out of the sky or out of the clouds and doesn't melt, then it's snow. All right, and then the way droplets form together and grow bigger and bigger is by a term called coalescence. So, um, so basically notice how the water droplet or snow is falling. Um, so it basically just gets too heavy for the cloud and comes out. And so as it comes down, it's picking up more and more particles. So it's growing in, um, in mass. And so that's called coalescence. So in, as it falls from the sky, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it falls um, in the cloud. So let's say that the water droplet stays in the cloud uh, then it can get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's how hail forms. Um, so the longer, the more lift you have, the bigger the water droplet's going to be. All right, and then the water cycle. Um, so just kind of a review, um, but we've got evaporation. This is very, um, very simple, but um, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, runoff. The only thing that's missing in this picture is transpiration. And transpiration would be from the trees, from uh, photosynthesis. All right. Being able to predict the weather by observing cloud formations is a skill that is somewhat lost on us modern humans. 
Most of us can easily look at a cloud and see the unicorn or ice cream cones, but very few of us can look at clouds and see the approaching cold front. Fortunately, being able to predict the weather is easier than one may think. Clouds can easily be broken into four categories. These categories are high clouds, middle clouds, low clouds, and clouds with vertical growth. Clouds are also identified by shape. Cumulus refers to a heap of clouds. Stratus refers to clouds that are long and streaky. And nimbus refers to the shape of rain, because we all know what rain looks like. High clouds form at 16,000 to 43,000 feet. Basically, these are the clouds that you only encounter on the top of really high mountains or at the cruising altitude of a jet airplane. Due to the extreme conditions at which they form, they tend to be comprised primarily of ice crystals and they do not block sunlight. High clouds include cirrus, cirrostratus, and cirrocumulus. Cirrus clouds are white, wispy clouds that stretch across the sky. By all accounts, cirrus clouds indicate fair weather in the immediate future. However, they can also be an indication of a change in weather patterns within the next 24 hours, most likely a change of pressure fronts. By watching their movement and the direction in which the streaks are pointed, you can get a sense of which direction the weather front is moving. Cirrostratus tend to be sheet-like and cover the whole sky. You can usually tend to see the sun or moon through them. Their presence usually indicates moist weather within the next 12 to 24 hours. Cirrocumulus clouds tend to be large groupings of white streaks that are sometimes seemingly neatly aligned. In most climates, these mean fair weather for the near future. However, in the tropics, these clouds may indicate an approaching tropical storm or hurricane, depending on the season. Middle clouds form at 6,500 to 16,000 feet. They are comprised of water and, if cold enough, ice, and they often block sunlight, but not always. Middle clouds consist of altostratus and altocumulus. Altostratus are gray and or blue clouds that cover the whole sky. They tend to indicate a storm sometime in the very near future, since they usually precede inclement weather. Altocumulus are grayish white clouds blanketing the entire sky. They tend to look like large fluffy sheets in which there is a lot of contrast between light and dark. Sun does not pass through them. If you see them in the morning, Prepare for a thunderstorm in the afternoon. Low clouds form below 6,500 feet. These clouds are the ones that like to hang around, just above tall buildings. These clouds tend to contain water, but can also be comprised of snow if the weather gets cold enough. These clouds block sunlight and can bring precipitation and wind. Low clouds include stratus, stratocumulus, and nimbostratus. Stratus are low-lying solid clouds that are often formed when fog lifts off the ground. They obviously look like an elevated fog. Often they bring drizzle or light snow. Stratocumulus are low-lying bumpy and gray clouds. They do not bring precipitation. They also do not cover the entire sky and tend to come in rows and patches. Nimbostratus is your standard rain cloud. It is a large flat sheet of gray cloud with a little bit of differentiation. If you see these, Chances are, it's raining outside. And last but not least are clouds with vertical growth, which tend to have a base that hangs really low, around 5,000 feet, and a top that climbs really high, over 50,000 feet. Clouds in this category include cumulus and cumulonimbus. Cumulus clouds are your stereotypical white cotton ball clouds. So long as the clouds remain low clumps floating across the sky, there will be fair weather. However, you need to keep an eye on these clouds, because any vertical growth can indicate the start of a large storm. Cumulonimbus are cumulus clouds that have grown vertically into an anvil-like shape. The anvil tends to point in the direction the storm is moving. These clouds bring most dangerous weather, such as rain, lightning, hail, and tornadoes. All right, now that we know what the basic types of clouds are, we need to look up at the sky. Go outside and look at the sky. If there are no clouds in the sky, then the weather is fine. Assuming there are clouds in the sky, we now need to identify them. First, determine if you can see the sun or moon through them. If you can, then you are looking at high altitude clouds. If the clouds are thick, then there is a chance of poor weather a day or two in the future. To determine when the storm will arrive, observe whether or not the clouds appear to be moving. 
If they appear stationary, it is a slow moving front and probably won't arrive for over a day. If they appear to be moving, then the change in weather will be there faster. You can tell which way the storm is traveling by the direction the clouds are pointing. If you cannot see through the clouds, chances are that you are looking at middle or low altitude clouds. First, Determine which of the two you are dealing with by observing shape, color, and other more obvious giveaways. Are they covering the entire sky? Then they may be middle altitude clouds. Do they appear to be gray with a blue tint or fluffy white gray clouds with a lot of contrast between light and dark? If yes, then these are middle altitude clouds and you should prepare for rain within half a day. If you answered no to any of those questions, then check for low altitude clouds. These tend to appear low and often engulf mountains and buildings. If it looks like an elevated fog, expect drizzle, if it isn't already. If it is rows of low, dark, lumpy clouds, then the weather is otherwise okay, but watch for further developments. If there is a low, dark, gray sheet, then it's probably raining. If it's not, quickly go get your umbrella. If your clouds are low, fluffy, and white like cotton balls in the sky, then the weather is okay. However, keep an eye on these for any vertical growth of the cloud upwards into the sky, like turning into anvil shapes. These clouds can unexpectedly change from fair weather indicators into violent thunderstorms. All right, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll go look at clouds soon. All right, see you next time.